Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to join you today at the Internet Governance Forum. I have the honor of introducing today's keynote speaker, Doreen Bogdan Martin. As I'm sure you're all aware, Doreen is the director of the International Telecommunication Union at the Telecommunication Development Bureau. Her long public service career actually began here in the Commerce Department at the NTIA. At Commerce, we're committed to closing the digital divide. The pandemic exposed just how wide that divide truly is for so many Americans when it comes to broadband access. In the 21st century, broadband access and affordability isn't a luxury. It's essential, essential for our jobs, our education, and our health care. But too often, rural and underserved areas lacked basic cell service. That's why over the past few months, NTIA launched three new grant programs to help connect our most vulnerable communities to high-speed, affordable broadband. We've also launched a new broadband map that will help our build-out efforts. Because high-speed broadband that many of us take for granted is still out of reach for many Americans, disproportionately those who are non-white and low-income. There's no one more qualified than Doreen to help America and the world meet the demands of this moment. Under her leadership, the ITU development sector focuses on bringing digital connectivity to those who need it most. Doreen understands that when people are cut off from high-speed internet, they're also cut off from opportunity. And there's nothing she cares more about than expanding economic opportunity so everyone can participate in today's modern economy and pursue their dreams in the digital age. Her experience, expertise, and dedication over the years hasn't just benefited Americans, it's impacted people all over the world. As the first female director in the ITU's 153-year history, Doreen has been a champion for gender equality, addressing unconscious bias in recruitment and promotion across the communications and technology industry. She's also created an organization dedicated to empowering nearly 2 billion underprivileged youth from developing countries by encouraging their participation in the communications and technology sector. As our global economy recovers from the pandemic, it's time to close the digital divide, and Doreen is the best person to get the job done. I'm thrilled to support her candidacy to become the next ITU General Secretary. Doreen, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Madam Secretary. And thank you, Dustin and Melinda. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's such a great pleasure to join you today from a chilly, rainy, gray Geneva afternoon. It's really great to be here to open the US Internet Governance Forum. Um, I think it's, it's fair to say that right now, we're all living through very challenging times as Melinda has just mentioned. Over the past 18 months, we have seen the dial on broadband connectivity shift sharply from something desirable to something essential. In the face of lockdowns and quarantine restrictions, ready access to digital infrastructure has become a basic requirement for fully fledged participation in society and the economy. And for those of us lucky enough to enjoy a fast, affordable internet connection, access to the internet has actually been a, a sort of lifeline for us. But let us never forget that nearly half of humanity, nearly half of humanity still does not have this access. And that hundreds of millions more struggle with an internet connectivity that's simply too slow, too expensive, or too inaccessible to make any significant difference in their lives. This is not just a developing world prob problem. And here, of course, in the US, analysts estimate that 25% of the population still lack that home broadband connection. And the FCC reports that even where broadband is available, 100 million Americans choose not to subscribe. Around the world, we see a similar picture. 
with certain groups, especially disadvantaged, from rural dwellers, women, indigenous communities, persons with disabilities, and of course, people on low incomes. I think one of the greatest challenges ahead is going to be finding ways to deliver affordable, safe, and meaningful connectivity to all the world's people. The UN Secretary General's Digital Cooperation Roadmap, which was launched last summer, represents, I think, a significant milestone in our efforts to develop shared strategies to drive full digital inclusion. The roadmap calls for universal affordable connectivity by 2030. And I think that's a formidable challenge because the latest ITU data shows us that progress in rolling out connectivity to the underserved areas is actually slowing. In addition, we estimate that connecting all the unconnected by 2030 is gonna require, of course, a huge amount of investment in the vicinity of 428 billion, and that's just for the infrastructure. So as we look to how to achieve our vision of a fully connected planet, I think one thing's absolutely certain, and that is that no one can do this alone. Reaching the 3.7 billion people that are still offline and the hundreds of millions more suffering chronic digital exclusion really requires new thinking new financing models, new multi-stakeholder partnerships, carefully targeted actions, and innovative, responsive, and adaptive policies and regulation. Right now, we have a unique opportunity, a unique opportunity to rethink and to reshape policy principles and regulatory best practices to guide post-pandemic growth. We need to nurture more inclusive and collaborative approaches across a growing number of stakeholders. And most importantly, in our efforts to tackle the persistent and growing global digital divide, we need to put people at the core of our policy and regulatory decisions. At the ITU, multi-stakeholder partnership has always been at the heart of the way that we work. I think ITU is unique as, a, as the only UN agency with a membership that comprises not just the governments, we have 193 governments, but more than 900 leading tech companies, universities, international and regional organizations, ICANN, ISOC, the regional internet registries, civil society groups, they're all members of the ITU. And we've been developing and implementing impactful multi-stakeholder multi projects with public, private, and civil society partners for many decades. ITU has a long and prized tradition of consensus-driven decision-making from our global technical standards work, which is a highly collaborative process driven by experts from the private sector and then ratified by our member states to our online open consultations for stakeholders to provide inputs to international internet public policy issues. And as many of you know, <clears throat> right now, our council working group on the internet is consulting on issues related to the role of the internet in mitigating the impact of COVID-19. Some of you also know that we regularly hold World Telecommunications Policy Fora, known as WTPFs, on issues of pressing concern to the digital community. We have our sixth WTPF scheduled for later this year, and it will focus on harnessing emerging technologies to reboot the SDG process, the Sustainable Development Goals, and to tackle global challenges like the COVID pandemic. And as you may have seen last week, the UN launched the SDG Progress Report, and I guess no surprise, COVID has set the world back on many fronts, and there's an urgent call for transformative action to leverage technology and innovation. And at the UN level, I think the ITU has stepped up. We're responding to this call by co-leading a number of transformative initiatives with a broad range of stakeholders. One bold new multi-stakeholder partnership that I'm particularly proud of is our GIGA initiative with UNICEF and others 
to connect every school on the planet to the internet and every young person to information opportunity and choice. And since it's launched back in 2019, the project has been accelerating very fast. Last year alone, we welcomed 10 new partners, uh, including Ericsson, Dubai Cares, the Musk Foundation, and many others. And by the end of this year, we expect to complete a mapping for a million schools in 36 countries to connect at least 1,000 schools in each of our first priority 17 countries. And perhaps most importantly, to put in place the financial framework for an inclusive connectivity bond to raise those vital investment dollars. We're also working with UNICEF on the implementation of the roadmap recommendations on global connectivity and working on digital capacity building support programs with UNDP. Of course, we partner with many other UN agencies from WHO on digital health, ILO on digital employment opportunities, UN Women and the International Trade Center on our Equals Global Partnership to bridge the digital gender gap. And of course, as Secretary Ramundo just mentioned, our new youth initiative called Generation Connect, which is actively bringing the essential contributions of young people to the table and stimulating that needed a global dialogue around the emerging issues related to youth and technology. And I really think these kinds of large multi-stakeholder projects like GIGA uh, require a coordinated response, not only at the international level, but equally as important as they rely, they need to rely heavily on national and community or grassroots actions. And I think that's why national IGFs such as this one are so important in energizing stakeholders through dialogue and also helping to formulate informed and effective actions. Uh, of course, the ITU has been a staunch supporter of the IGF since its inception back in 2005, alongside, of course, with the WISIS Forum, uh, both of which were outcomes of the Tunis phase of the World Summit on the Information Society. And of course, since then, these two platforms have really worked side by side complementing each other's role with the IGF focused on the governance aspects of cyberspace and the WISIS forum focusing on the developmental aspects. And now, as we look ahead to the shape of a future IGF plus as foreseen in the UNSG's report on digital cooperation, I look forward to strengthening this partnership into helping drive broader participation from developing countries be it from LDCs, LLDCs, SIDS, civil society organizations, and of course, right from right across the increasingly diverse global ICT sector. In his second term address last month, Secretary General Guterres stressed his commitment to a strengthened IGF, empowered to bring all stakeholders together around the implementation of the digital cooperation roadmap and in reaffirming his commitments, he observed that we must never lose sight of our goal, an open, free, and secure digital future that embodies full respect for data protection, privacy, and human rights. And today's annual meeting of IGF USA, I think perfectly reflects that vision with key sessions on so many of the burning issues of the day from data privacy to security, digital identity, online markets, digital supply chains, and the growing challenge of content moderation over social networks. And I'm really looking forward to the exciting discussions. I do want to recognize as well the collaboration and the strong support that the ITU has always enjoyed from the IGF USA, as well as other US-based members of the digital community, including the Internet Society, ICANN, the registries, leading US tech companies and associations, and of course, the US administration, which is one of our most proactive member states in ITU's work. I think there's much to be proud of, but with COVID pushing forward this new wave of digital transformation, none of us can afford to rest on our laurels. And just as the pandemic has reinforced our human interconnectedness, it has also shown us the vital importance of digital interconnectedness and what it really means to be offline 
in our increasingly digital age. We've heard that the digital divide is becoming the new face of inequality, and it's in our power to stop this from happening. Universal connectivity would mean that no child needs to miss out on school, that no individual needs to lose their job, and that no community need be disadvantaged simply because of the lack of a broadband connection. And when the multi-stakeholder community came together in 2003 and 2005 to formulate the WISIS principles, it was with the belief that we had something special that needed to be protected and nurtured through multi-stakeholder cooperation, one internet without boundaries connecting us all. And more than 15 years later, with the internet now a crucial part of our lives and our economies, we face new challenges around security, privacy, online hate speech, even the potential fragmentation of the internet as we now know it. We must continue to advance and advocate for the principles that we affirmed as a community in 2005. And as before, the key to overcoming these challenges lies in coming together and working collectively in a spirit of openness and cooperation. With our exceptionally diverse membership, ITU embodies the WISIS principles of multi-stakeholderism. And I can assure you that we're not going to step back from that commitment to inclusivity. I know that we can count on the support and the active participation of USIGF stakeholders in ITU's ongoing global efforts to build back better for a safer, more connected and more sustainable world a world where everyone has digital access that is safe, that is attractive, that is affordable, and where everyone is digitally empowered to build a better future for themselves, their families, and their communities. I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to join you today. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Doreen, for, for joining us and kicking off the conference. And thank you for all the, the work that you're doing to get people connected. Um, so, you know, keep it up and, and, you know, we'll see you around, of course. <laughs>